in that time frame, we grew to have basically consistently 50 to 60,000 listeners showing up. You know, they either show up live or they would watch the replay. Yeah, people are so tired of being pitched to death. You know, um, that's one of the big things I get from folks like, oh, we've been to another training where it was 25% of content and 75 upsell. Pitch, 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 run to the back of the room. And I'm just like, I'm not like that. I'm like, listen, hey, if you want to sign up here as it is. And my, my biggest competitor came to me. Well, Scott, your generation just likes to give stuff away. I'm like, well, they need to do that. You got to embrace that because if they don't, if they you don't start doing that, they're going to come to me or go to somewhere else to find it. And so we create a big sense of urgency with a new class through a webinar, a podcast, just leading everybody to this like launch. And it's normally five ninety nine, but we're going to start it off at a dollar, and it's going to go up by a dollar or five dollars every time somebody signs up for it. And we go through everything, and people just get, they, you know, ah, break the internet. You know what I mean? But it tells you when, when it starts to fizzle out, it tells you the value that people you know identify with that product. And that's what you should have that price of that product going forward. If you want to build a legitimate, profitable online business without shiny objects, without the hypey gimmicks, and without the stress and overwhelm, if you want to make more money without having to be present online all day, every day, pumping out content that nobody sees, and hustling DMs to generate leads and sales, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the Digital Trailblazer Podcast, your online business university, where you'll learn how ordinary people start from ground zero with no influence, no email list or audience to sell to, and no business or marketing experience, and go from working nine to five jobs to building successful six and seven figure online businesses and all the steps in between. Learn the strategies that worked and what didn't, learn the mistakes that they made and how to avoid them, and then learn their plans for scaling their businesses and taking things to the next level. All so that you can build your business faster and easier and make more money without sacrificing the things that are important to you in your life. I'm your host, Leah Ray Getz, and with me is my husband, Todd. Now let's get to it with today's guest. Welcome, Digital Trailblazers. I'm super excited to have with us Scott Carson. Scott, go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience. Let them know what you're all about. I'm uh, awesome to be here. I'm known across the country as the note guy. So I've been for the last uh, a digital entrepreneur for over 20 years in the real estate space, focused primarily on the niche of buying distressed debts, you know, mortgage notes. I know that doesn't sound sexy, but I compare it to the movies. If you ever watched the big short movie out there with Christian Bale, Steve Carell. I'm the Christian Bale character in there. I buy mortgage debt from banks and lenders where people, naughty borrowers who haven't been paying on their mortgage usually for six months, up to six years. And we buy that and then we try to work it out with them by modifying the loan or keeping their house. As I like to say, I don't rehab properties. I rehab borrowers it, without sending them to the Betty Ford Clinic, if that makes sense. <laughs> I like that. That's interesting. So how did you get into this space? It's yeah, weird, weird aspect. I started a mortgage company with a buddy of mine back in 2000 and uh, 2004. And one of the sponsoring brokers was traveling the country, teaching real estate investing, speaking all the time. And so basically for four years from 2004 to 2000, I like had an apprenticeship while we were originating mortgages on one side of the office. I was learning about creative financing and the note world uh, in real estate uh, from a guy named Bob Leonetti and a lady named Jimmy Keelan. And then when everything hit the fan in 2008, I left there and started my own company in buying and selling debts and leveraged social media and videos and stuff like that to help me get the word out. And that's what I've been doing ever since. So people always joke that, you know, Scott's everywhere. It's just because I, I powered the, uh, used the power of the internet and social media and digital marketing to really get my, my message out where others weren't. Yeah. So I, I get the buying debt piece. What I, I need help understanding, and probably a lot of our audience says, is what what are you marketing if you're buying from the banks? Like so, Exactly. So these banks will send me large lists of their naughty notes, right? It may be 50, it may be 1,000. Now, I can't buy it all myself. So I use marketing to, to A, talk about these deals because it's a little bit different than going out and buying a home. So part of what I use in the marketing side is to teach what I'm doing and the power of buying debt versus going out and trying to buy property. This helps me move these assets, these other notes to other investors that I make money off of the sales of that. It also helps me raise capital um, to take down more deals for myself from investors who say, hey, I like what you're doing, but I necessarily don't want to do it. Can I just write you a check to invest with you? And, and thirdly, it literally just gets the word out so that people get interested in learning about this niche of note investing that's been around for a while. It's just not like 
fictional flipping. So then they want to learn about it. So then they sign up for our coaching and classes and all that good stuff as well. Okay, very cool. So when did the sort of the coaching and education side of this kind of blossom? Yeah, it, it's a funny story. I was actually got called to speak on stage at a, a investing summit. Uh, for an hour, and I got bombarded after as I walked off the stage with like 30, 40 people. They're like, do you have a class? Do you teach this? I'm like, uh, yeah, sure, I teach it. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing prepared. And I should have known because the guy I went from, he was teaching different workshops back in the day. But I was like, we, I didn't have anything planned. So I just said, yes, give me your card. We'll charge 250 for the three-day class. So we literally just reached out to our office and they had a train spot and said, is this, is it open in like two months for a three-day workshop? And like, yeah. So then we started going around and, hey, we have a workshop coming up in a couple of weeks. And we had 20 people that showed up and that, you know, for that class, filled the class. So in that, you know, a couple of weeks, we put together a binder and a manual and started putting together an email list to start targeting the folks. And that's kind of where it all started. Now, um, you know, I, I was known as the educator of the year a couple of times in my industry, and uh, we've got the number one YouTube channel, the number one podcast, and literally we've helped thousands of regular Joes, regular individuals, guys and gals out there who are either working full-time in their career, want to do this part-time, or they want to get out of fixing and flipping or tired of dealing with toilets, tenants, and trash shots, and they, they want to be the bank, basically, as we, and that's what we teach. Okay, that's interesting, because I've we're kind of getting into the real estate space a little bit. I, I mean, Todd is more than me, to be honest, but um, I didn't know this was a thing at all. <laughs> I mean, most people don't. I mean, you're, it's not, you know, I fell in love with real estate because I was watching Flip This House. You know what I mean? The, the HGTV shows, all that stuff where, you know, you make 10 grand a month or make 10 grand a year and you can buy a million dollar house, right? All these fictional shows or, hey, five grand and buy carpet. That's not the case. Most of those don't exist. And that's how I got started in investing, but I did it wrong um, by overpaying and not figuring it out. So I, during that apprenticeship, you know, Lee, I, ha I really had four years of learning how to do things creatively. I had an MBA, you know, education from all these great real estate investors that I could pick up the phone and talk to them and pick their brain and took their classes. So I took all that stuff that I learned and started to apply it into my own marketing and in my own classes to help get the word out about what we're doing and yeah. So you mentioned podcast and YouTube. What's is, do you have like a, a focus or are both kind of equal for you or where are you spending your time online? So I start with a marketing first kind of mindset every day. I got started with my podcast back in, uh, God, it's been about seven years now, but I was doing video well before that. You remember when Facebook lives first came out, I was at an event out in Las Vegas. I think Gary V got on the stage and he was like, you got to use video. You got to use video. And then like an hour later, Robert Kerchevek, one of the, the sharks from Shark Tank, you got to incorporate video and in what you're doing. I'm like, okay, so we're doing video. So we went back to the office and I said, okay, let's start doing a daily little video, Facebook Live. And so we did one basically for five months straight, 150 business days straight and it built an audience. And we were always doing video and webinars and conference calls anyway before that little bit, but we really took a video first approach to it. Well, that when you do that straight, you build an audience, you build a following, we're patient in what we're doing. Sometimes I was, all I cared about was that, hey, we'd get one person on, you know, one is greater than none and might be the one person needs to hear it and just grow. And in that time frame, we grew to have basically consistently 50 to 60,000 listeners showing up. You know, they either show up live or they would watch the replay for a while. And I said, okay, we're on to something here. And then a buddy of mine came to me and said, you should really do a podcast. And I'm like, I don't want to do all that extra work. He's like, no, 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 we can outsource it and just keep recording and send it to me. And we'll I was like, let's do it. So we started a podcast, the Note Closure Show, which is basically just taking our daily or three times a week now video podcast and we throw it to youtube it's also an audio so people can listen or watch um and and half the time it's me teaching a lesson the other half is me having a vendor or a guest on but it it really allows people to learn what they're doing because now we just uploaded eight, episode 850 of the show on monday you know we've got more episodes than anybody else that we dominate that space our youtube channel has about uh over two thousand videos for people to learn from yeah, so it's 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 we really give a ton of content, but that also gets people to understand like, hey, I like this guy, or I yeah, I don't like this guy, and that's fine. But it builds rapport because then when people will book like a call with me, you know, uh, 
that hey, I, I've listened to, I've binged your stuff, you watched your videos, or listen to your podcast. I feel like I know you, I trust you. You know, now I'm ready to sign up for a class or a workshop. Or like, I had a guy uh, text me this morning. He's, I'd never heard of him before, but he booked a call with me. He's like, I'm ready to sign up for coaching. I'm like, okay, let's talk and make sure you're really ready. But turns out he took like our one day course about six months ago and some other things. So it's just a matter of giving, 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 and then you get back is the way I kind of look at it. Yeah, no, I think that's so true. And and I, I'm i inspired and a little bit jealous of your Facebook live journey. Was that on on your page or your profile? It was on uh, was first on my personal profile until we capped that at 5,000. Then we converted it to a business profile. And now we've got, I think, 30,000 followers on the business profile and still capped at the personal. But then we've moved away. You know, the Facebook algorithms have changed so much for the most part. So but the thing is that... Um, a, a guy by the name of Roland Frazier, who's a really smart marketing guy, told me a long time ago, Scott, just share your message everywhere. It does, it's not so difficult. You don't have to create 20 pieces of content, creating one piece and resharing it is like sort of throwing out one line of the water there, like in Cape Coral, where you live down the neck of the woods. You throw a cast net out and you'll eventually catch more fish because it gives people more of an opportunity to see it. And that's what we've we always, I'm always amazed like when I talk to people and they're like, oh, I'm thinking about doing a video podcast. I'm, well, what do you do using to record your audio? Oh, soon. Like there's already video there. Just throw it up on YouTube. Come on. You know? So, no, I love that. And and I think it goes, something that kind of came to mind when you were talking about that journey is how many times you hear about new strategies and people will do it for a couple of days. They'll do it for maybe a couple of weeks and things get busy, whatever. And that's why people don't get traction with it. Your like the amount of viewers getting on on a, a Facebook Live is insane. But that comes from you know there's always there's the good plan and then there's a little bit of magic of timing, right? And I think that's where that really came together is that you were super duper consistent and and putting out great content, sharing that message, and then you had a little bit of the magic dust of of the timing of the algorithm pushing lives and, and doing everything that they were doing at the time. Um, but those are super, I think that's inspiring for folks to to hear, you know, how consistency can make a, a big, big impact. It does. I, I had to tell you, I, I my first YouTube channel got shut down. Actually, we, we tried to do one of those things where you paid for like followers or likes on a video one time to test out. And YouTube shut down my account and I lost like 840 videos all right there. This is before I started a podcast. But so we had to rebuild our YouTube channel basically. And now we're coming up on 8,000 subscribers. I mean, what I do is a niche. It's very niche in real estate. It's not the general real estate aspect of it. And if I could tell anybody, anybody listening or watch this, the more niche down that you know, the better you're going to be. The, the biggest mistake I see from a lot of uh, educators or podcasters or whatever like that is they're just too broad. And, and it's, they don't have any value because they're just kind of too generic, too vanilla. People like getting into specific flavors and nichiness. And while, you know, there may not be a million note investors out there, there's a good solid core of 400 to 500,000 probably. Somewhere that that's that's who my audience is. And, uh, you know, I don't expect to have 100,000 YouTube. It'd be great at some point and maybe I can get there. But the point is, I just show up every day. I got to give a content. I know that I have a I have a marketing calendar. I'm not doing a podcast episode every day now. I just don't have the time. But I do try to get out at least three, three a week. They're not very long. They maybe one was nine minutes, another one was eleven minutes, one was fifty because it was an interview with somebody. And then sh and then taking that same content and using it on YouTube, creating a uh, LinkedIn newsletter about the article. Share, creating a short one minute video, promoting it, and then sharing that across all social medias. It all kind of uh, figures together, but it, it doesn't t take a lot of money and it doesn't take a lot of time because I'm a, a film it and throw it up there. I don't spend a lot of time editing stuff because I like people to know, hey, this is me. And if I can do it, you sure as heck can do it. Now, it sounds like you're doing a ton of organic. Do you do any paid as well? Zero paid. We just did not find it valuable to do that. So what we, what we found, we've, we've used what we would be paying uh, for stuff to use in some, uh, some different uh, IP scrapers. So we've got a couple of things that if somebody goes to our website, it grab it captures their IP and then goes out and finds their name and email. And then we drip market them a little bit, say, Hey, I saw that you stopped by the website or we're checking out this podcast episode. How can we help you? And that always works best for us because it's a, it's a better fit feel. We've done, I, I can't say we haven't done zero. We have done some of it. 
and they've been okay. It's been it's been good, but for the most part, always that organic stuff that comes in, it's it's always just a much better fit for what we're doing. Yeah, I can see just uh, leveraging ads for in the retargeting, you know, purposes. That once they found you somewhere else, you're just going to get hit, you know, because um, it is so so niche. Um, I could see that working. So you're doing some cool stuff when it comes to like conversions and and how you're converting people. So walk our audience through how that's working for you. Yeah. So people will come to our website. We'll, we have a, a thing called, uh, there's a thing called retention.com or getemails.com, which grabs their IP address. And then it goes out, even if they don't click on something, it still grabs their IP address the first time. But it, but it tells us which website they came to and viewed or where they were where, where referred from, whether it was Google or Yahoo or whatever it was. And so it gives us their first name, last name, and email. And so what we do every day is we'll sit, pull that in the morning. Like I had 11 new people hit last night on it so they all got a customized email personalized email this morning hey saw you checked out this website or checked out this episode or landed on this one landing page how can we help assist you what are your goals you know um if it's a specific podcast episode something we may get some a second you know episode and then we're like one of the things we always like to invite them to is every month we host a one day like mini class like a four-hour cliff notes version we call it note weekend and so it's a either i I, I will uh, do this live once a quarter, and then we replay it uh, the other months. But that it sends people into uh, our funnel, so they sign up for the class. They take, they watch three or four hours. It's a soft sell into either our, our more full, you know, workshop for anywhere from three hundred to a thousand bucks, or they'll sign up for our monthly membership at ninety seven dollars a month. So it gets them learning, starting to pay attention a little bit. Most of the time, they've already been listening to me for a while on the podcast stuff like that. But then they then they're booking phone calls with us, and it, whichever they sign up, then it leads to the you know like if they sign up for the one day class, it's about a thirty percent conversion rate into either the membership or the class, and then out of that uh, we host that class once a quarter, um, and then we sell high end coaching off of that. You know, you know five grand to twenty five thousand dollars in high end coaching for folks. A couple things people need to pull from this and why it works is number one, you're super niche, so that. When people are registering for that class, they are your people. Yep. Right. It's like they want what you have. They've been targeted because they already went to your website. They are 100% your people and you are super dialed in, which which makes this work. And then the second piece is all of the nurture. Mm-hmm. Right. That you're, you've you nurtured them through your content on the front end. Right. And, and who knows how much content they've consumed by the time that they end up going to that workshop and then you're loving on them for another three to four hours. Exactly right. So like I give you an example, um, we've, for 13 years, we've been doing a Monday night webinar of some sort, 35 to 40 weeks out of every year. They're doing it for 13 years. No night in America. We, you know, we used to be the Monday night. Well, we're going to do it. So the football night in America, we're going to do it. No night in America. Right. So we get people on there and usually it's live of me going through some sort of nugget. And it's just really good content. Like this last Monday night, I literally pulled up a tape of 349 assets that they could bid on or take a look. And we spent an hour, hour and a half going through them to help them find the deals from the duds. Nobody else does that in my industry. Nobody else wants to share kind of the resources. We go through that. And besides that, we also, those that that took my class a couple weeks ago, we do four weeks of coaching calls for free after the fact to help them implement more. So, and then of course, those calls are open to the public. If they want to come in and watch public they see what we're giving away for free like wow what he gives away for free imagine what his pay stuff is and we blow them away that way as well yeah i think that's a an off a challenge that a lot of new people run into is they're like well you tell me to give all this value you say that but oh how do i why are they gonna pay pay me like if i'm giving everything away and you're like you don't understand human psychology like no. You know, obviously there's going to be way more support, way more details, way more everything in the paid offer. And people see all the goodness in the in the free and they just light up. I know that's one of the most common things that I hear when I'm on a sales call. Like when someone's looking at our coaching program to help them with with selling their or launching their programs, it's well, I say, why us? It's like, well, because you give real stuff. Like it's not just fluff like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are so tired of being pitched to death, you know. Yes. Um, that's one of the big things I get from folks like, oh, we've been to another training where it was 25% of content and 75 upsell. 
pitch, 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 run to the back of the room. And I'm just like, I'm not like that. I'm like, listen, hey, if you want to sign up here as it is. And my, my biggest competitor came to me, well, Scott, your generation just likes to give stuff away. I'm like, well, they need to do that. You got to embrace that because if they don't, if they you don't start doing that, they're going to come to me or go to somewhere else to find it. There's a little tool called Google. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got you have to you have to adapt. You have to uh, evolve because marketing is always changing. If you're you're trying to do business, you know another one of my competitors is still trying to do the old direct mail route that she's been teaching for I don't know thirty years and buy a Amazon forest of training manuals and no videos, no support. I'm like, that just doesn't work these days. It might work for somebody who's older and doesn't like the digital side, but it's not effective in the 21st you century. You should send her our way. We'll help her convert. And she needs that. She's like, send her. like, no, I'm good. I'm like, yeah, I hope you are. Yeah. We got your retirement saved because this is not going to work forever. <laughs> Burning money, you know, that's not, that's not fun at all. I just got back from um, a mastermind with a bunch of, of, very seasoned, very successful marketers. And some of these guys have been in this. I mean, Todd and I, I think are we're at eight years now. So I feel like in internet space, that's a long time. Yes, um, it is actually, yeah. Yeah, but these guys like 20 years, like the beginning of the internet time. <laughs> and and the biggest theme is adaptability. Yeah. Like it, you have to be able to pivot with the market when is appropriate and, and understand that you're not, you know, jumping from shiny object to shiny object, but you need to really study the market, know what's happening and make strategic adjustments when needed. So one of the things I love using too, when I create a new product or a new training class is I use something called a bump sale. And uh, you've probably, where basically if somebody signs up at a buck, it goes up by a dollar, goes up by $5. And so we create a big sense of urgency with a new class through a webinar, a podcast, just leading everybody to this like launch. And it's normally five ninety nine, but we're going to start it off at a dollar, and it's going to go up by a dollar or five dollars every time somebody signs up for it. And we go through everything, and people just get, they, you know, ah, break the internet. You know what I mean? But it tells you when when it starts to fizzle out, it tells you the value that people, you know, identify with that product, and that's what you should have that price of that product going forward. So we've used that in a lot of cases. To, to do it, but it's always interesting seeing people. I had one lady signed up who was going to sign up for $8. She was like, I went to hit it and somebody beat me to it. And so for two days, she complained to me that she didn't get it at $8. And I'm like, you need to go back and sign up. It's at $50 now. You need to go back and sign up. It's at $99. She ended up signing back up to $125 and she's complaining. I'm like, like, you wasted two days complaining that you didn't get it at 8 You just got to be fast, you know? And yeah, click the button I, again. Exactly. <laughs> Click it again. Don't complain. But it, it, you're going to have errors too. I, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things that digital marketers worry about is pissing everybody else off sometimes, or the trolls that happen. Look, you got to realize that not everybody is your client. That was one of the biggest things that I learned from one of my mentors early on in life is that there's three buckets of people: people that love you, that your cheerleaders, your friends, your fan, you know, families, existing clients. Those are the people that are great in one bucket. On the opposite side, you got all the trolls, the haters, the people not doing anything who have just a dark, dark hole for a soul, as I like to say, guys. <laughs> You're never going to make those people happy. And, and then in the middle bucket is people that don't know you. They're on the fence. Like maybe you've watched a little bit of stuff and they're just, they're kind of teetering. So focus on the two buckets, the, the happy, your cheerleaders, and then the middle bucket. Forget about the trolls because here's one thing. You will never have somebody who is doing more than you talk bad about you. I've always found it's always somebody that's not doing anything or jealous of the situation, stuff like that. And when I knew that, I was like, oh, they're just upset that I'm doing more than them. They're just upset doing one. They're not affecting my payday. They're not signing up for my stuff. So why do I give a rat's ass or give them a second in my mind? It, it's very liberating, but not everybody has that thick skin yet when they're, they're building out their program or been doing it for a while. Yeah. I think it's, it's a, a painful, but really important lesson for everyone to learn. Like, your content should be polarizing. You don't want it, you know, it's like the, the Bible verse of being lukewarm and being spit out. Like no one is going to pay, pay money with you if, if you're lukewarm. Exactly. You can't be Switzerland. You got to have, you got to take one side of the, the argument and stick with it. And that's okay. Like dive in, be you, be you loudly and let the people who naturally attra are attracted to you be attracted. Let the people who are not your jam be not your jam. 
and let them go and that's okay. You know, you have to avoid to, there's so much of the social media up there. Is it really social proof? It's douchepreneur proof. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Too many with the Lambos and the honeys or the fancy vacations. Look, most of that doesn't happen. Most of that's rented. There's a couple good Netflix documentaries on some of these uh, jokers out there. Be yourself. You know what I mean? Um, the million, one of my favorite books is The Millionaire Next Door. It talks about the guy, you know, in real estate who's driving a late model Ford F-150 Ford or white pickup of some sort. It's a few years old. I mean, I drive around a Dodge Ram. It's 10 years old. It's paid for. Still drives, but it's, it's paid for. It works. That's all I need. I'm not flashing here. I'm not going to spend money. No, I like to travel. I like to have fun. But to flaunt it, like, come on now. The, you know, when you look at what the, uh, the government's starting to do, they're really starting to crack down on those false pretenses or the people uh, fake. You can't do that. Just be yourself. Hey, if you make t make 10 grand, say you made 10 grand. You can say you made 100 grand when you didn't make it. And don't lie to people. Just be honest with people. And that's one of the biggest things that you can do to stand out and add credibility. Well, and I think I think people miss under they uh, they don't get the opportunity that you have when you're just getting started to be re relatable. Because a lot of people, even like where we are, we're at that kind of not relatable people stage for a lot of people. I think personality, hopefully, and content um, kind of overcomes that. But like when we were first getting started and we were just making our first online sales, we were just doing these first things, like people saw someone just a few steps ahead who could help them. And we had so many people who, you know, they saw such and such do, who's a big guru doing similar to what we were doing and getting great results. But who did they contact? Because we were just a couple steps ahead. And and they didn't want the guru answer that came from a team who, you know, it wasn't even relatable because they couldn't even understand how how small they were just at the beginning versus someone just a couple steps ahead. That's who they want to learn from because they just did it. And they're so close that they feel like, okay, they have the answer. It's right there. Well, but it's also too is that they can connect with you. They're going to talk to you. They're going to, you're going to actually get answers from you guys. And that's one of the big things I like, you know, I give everybody my cell phone number, like, Hey, book a call on my calendar. You will talk to me when you're coaching, you're coaching with me, not some employee, not somebody who's just reading from a manual. I've always said that it, an employee cannot teach an entrepreneur how to succeed. It's got to be a, an entrepreneur teaching an entrepreneur. I know. Yeah. That's, that's one weird thing that you see in this, in the, the online, like biz coaching space is people who, you know, the big name is behind it. And then they just like are the big name. They're not involved in any of the details. And it's just people who they've trained to mimic them. And I'm like, I couldn't sell that because my people need more help than that. Like they need the actual expertise to get great results. There, there's coaching companies out there that have contacted me like, hey, we want to, you know, we want to sign up and be your coaches. I'm like, do you have somebody that's focused on notes? No, we're talking about wholesale and we're flipping houses. I'm like, I don't teach that. Well, we just want to market to your list. We'll give you a big. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm I'm not going to do that. I don't. That's not what I teach. I'm not here just for a check. And that's a big, big thing. So people get so busy and pimping their image out or something. Look, we have, you know, we have uh, affiliate relationships and vendors and sponsors, but they're all folks that we use or products that we use that we truly endorse. It's not getting paid. And if we if it is something that we've ever done, it's always, hey, we don't use this, but we think it will be good for you. Or check this out, you know, and there's people out there. Well, I was talking to a major podcast. He's like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta pay some bills. So I'm, I got these new sponsors. I don't use, I'm going to broadcast my own. I'm like, I just can't do that. And I think the longer that you're in this space, the more you realize the value of your reputation. Like this is a long-term play, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're just getting started now, or you've been at this for a long time, you should not be promoting everything that people throw at you because some of it, and sometimes a lot of it is junk. It's mm -hmm. junk. And you're going to burn bridges with potential, with audience people, with potential customers, if you're promoting things that you wouldn't be proud to put your name behind, right? So I know for ourselves, if, if we're going to promote someone, we need to know that what they do is amazing, yep. like point blank, because we've worked for eight years to build our reputation online as people of, you know, with a good, strong, moral, ethical, you know, we're here for you to support you, all of that good stuff. And, and we're not going to waste that for a few bucks and here's another thing too i think uh when you're early on in marketing and, and blazing your own trail and stuff like that you get people that come to you and you really want to make that sale to them but it gives you have that sickness feeling you just have an uneasy feeling about that person trust it 
Trust yeah. that sixth sense. <laughs> Some of the biggest mistakes I made as an investor and entrepreneur is is bring a lot of people come in that I go back. I shouldn't have allowed them in. They just didn't have a good feeling about it, and it blew up in my face. And I was so glad to get rid of them. And that's the thing. Just uh, yes, I know you got to pay bills. I get that sometimes, but there's always that point. It's going to come back and bite you. And it's sometimes better to say, "Listen, I just don't think we're a fit." You know, let's stay friends, but I just don't think we're a fit for, uh, for you're a fit for what we're doing. I just don't think you're in, no offense. Just, I don't want your money. You know, don't need your money. Yeah. And I think um, it, it is uh, freeing when people finally accept that. But I think typically people have to go through a few of those uh, before they really take it on and stay firm with it and get more because you kind of get the idea, but then you're kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit. Well, they're kind of like, you kind of make up excuses until you've been through it and you're like, nope, that was a bad client. I don't want to do that anymore. This is not a good idea. Well, that's why it's just so important to have a coach. I mean, having a coach that can help you through that, that can hold your hand. You know, there's been times in you know, my competitors, we've talked and like, and they're like, yeah, I don't trust that guy or that gal. They're that I'm like, well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Or when I see that somebody's starting to promote them, I, I'll do a, hey, that person, you got to be careful about that. You, the last thing you need is a big chargeback. This guy or gave me sound good. But they will stab you in the back when the first time something trends a little bit different. So you got to be careful about that. So having a coach and connecting and networking with others in your industry to find out what's best. Uh, one of the things that we did a couple of years ago is there was, this is before all the big online summits, Leah, is we decided we were going to do our own online summit. We went from doing hotel workshops to basically Zoom workshops. We decided we'll do a summit that way. So we invited like 30 to 40 of our peers in the industry, my competitors, some of my vendors, all that stuff. And we put on a four-day workshop called Note Camp. And we literally just said, hey, you've got, come on, we'll have six, seven speakers each day for an hour each. Only a third were allowed to sell because they were those that we liked and understood that it was valuable. The other rest was just got to be pure content. And and it was such a great networking event for everybody, but people loved it because they were able to see people that went speaking on the same stages together at the same time. And it led to a lot of drafting off of each other's audiences. Um, you know, them promoting or social tagging and social media posts of that. So it was really one of the most valuable things. And now we had 34 sessions that we could A, turn those into podcast episodes or turn those into a manual. A book from the whole event became its own product besides having affiliates with those that were selling. So that was one great thing that really hit. We saw a significant bump in downloads and engagement and coaching from just drafting off of other people as well, too. And that was a fully virtual summit? It's a fully live virtual summit, you know, not pre-recorded. It was literally, right. we used a calendar link to everybody booked their stuff, but it was like, it was on track. You know, we used two Zoom rooms. We had two speaking sessions going simultaneously. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. But we would get, and we had all pre-scheduled with the social media posts and the speaker posts and tagging them all. And uh, we um, invite all the folks that were watching to share too. They would get a discount off the replay. So we had... Over 2,000 pieces of organic social media posts from those attendees alone over that three day. And it was blown away. Our, you know, our, our friends and families, even those that didn't want to be on it, they're like, we need to be on there next year because it was <laughs> so amazing. But it was drafting. I think it's, it's a great thing for those that are getting started. Invite your peers, invite your confidence, be, and be have a virtual stage to help people get rock and rolling and, and see what people like and engage with. And then maybe that's the niche that you go after. Yeah, no, I think that's that is gold, massive gold nuggets for folks to pay attention to. Like, so I was just in a room with with a bunch of um, seven, a fellow seven and eight figure earners. Now, was the con like most of the content I kind of knew, but there was a few gold nuggets that I took from the content of the workshop. The value of the workshop was the relationships. Exactly, exactly. Relationships. So we have a a very big deal potentially on the horizon. Um, be for just one of the several follow-ups that we're doing from this thing. So it's it's relationships and building those, you know, collaborations, affiliates, referrals, joint ventures, like all kinds of things that you can end up doing together. There's so much opportunity. And so I think people get sort of like in their silo, right? They get, you know, they're just focused on their one little thing and just getting more leads and more clients versus making sure there's enough space to, to have those con authentic connections um, network with people and, and open up those channels to be able to work together more. Well, you said something very critical that 75% of people really fail to do is the follow-up. Yeah. You know, 
is, you know, you don't get a chance to speak with everybody in a three day, but follow up. Hey, we met at this event. I'd love, I didn't get a chance to really sit down with you. I'd love to talk with you. Let's visit, let's schedule a virtual coffee or jump online. And then following up with making it easy for people to connect with you or rescheduling through a link or whatever, just that continue to follow. The biggest fallacy I hear people say, and this always pisses me off, like, oh, you're, you're too busy to talk to me. No, I'm not. You know, or I didn't want to bother you again. I mean, pe- I'm like, people are normal. They're going to forget things. Touch base and, the, you know, this squeaky hinge gets the, the oil. So, yes, you know, 80% of sales are made after the fifth contact. I'm going to have a tattoo of that on my hand today because I say it all the time. <laughs> But it's after the tombstone f- as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. This was the sixth contact. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's it. Follow up with people. I mean, I, I'm always amazed too when I'm talking to people and I ask them, okay, well, how many people on your email list? Well, I don't have an email list. I'm like, what? I'm like, you've got to have an email list. You've got something that you can reach out to because you really own that. If you're just relying on a Facebook or an Instagram or something like that, you don't own it. It can go away instantly. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of the Alex Jones guy from InfoWars because when he was canceled, he lost everything except two things, his email list and his RSS feed. You know, and he owed those things. He, every, you know, um, so he still had that. He could still operate on that. Don't really be reliant. That's why so many people are all worried about TikTok. What's going to happen with that out there? You got st- to gotta share your message everywhere and, and don't be afraid to follow up with folks and expand and learn from others in your in your circle like you did, Leah. Yeah, one hundred percent, and and that's um, get them on. Take the traffic that you don't own, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all these things, and turn it into traffic you own. Get them on your list. If you are just out there creating traffic or creating content, and you're not pushing them to an email list or even an SMS list or something, like yeah, all that work is for naught if it goes away. That's that's the biggest thing. It for- does, and 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 if you look, even just the last few years really big names had their accounts disappear overnight on platforms mm-hmm. um and in small names obviously as well it's it's you don't control it whether don't don't let that feel like you control it because in reality use it because it's very powerful yes use it but move it to somewhere that you do own it and you can survive and and keep going when things get are when you know something happens the true words are never spoken in the digital trail <laughs> right there you go thank you um so i'm curious like what would be one piece of advice that you'd want to to share with folks who who are kind of inspired by your journey what you've done um if they want you know to create the sort of maybe that 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 one day workshop that half day workshop or whatever um yeah what would you give them Easy thing to do is give them some give people your good stuff. It's very simple. Rec- record it. I mean, share it live. People always like the live aspect of it, so that you could record it. You could jump on Zoom and go live on YouTube or Facebook. That'd be the first place to start, and then upload it and then save it as a file that's evergreen. I mean, I only teach it like once every three months now, but we still have consistently five hundred to six hundred people opting into that one day class, evergreen, knowing that they can always talk to me knowing that they get on the phone with me. And it's it's just one thing that we share everywhere. It's, it's it's an easy lead in, lead bank for people to see, hey, this is actually how he or she teaches. This is good. I'm not getting this anywhere. Don't make it a sales pitch. That's the biggest thing you can do. But that's, that's the thing. Just give them some good stuff. Don't be over pitchy. Be yourself and encourage them to ask questions and then just follow up with people. Hey, thanks for taking the class or hey, thanks for signing up. Here's the next space for you. I mean, we went to the, you know, we we discovered our membership or nice and my membership because like, okay, what if, if people take our class twice a year, they're going to pay at least a grand, if not more. Yeah. You know, why don't we just make it $97 a month? So technically they save what they would pay for one class. They get year round coaching, year round connections with us. And it was just, it was an easy uh, revenue model to add into what we do on a daily basis. So if people want to learn more about you, where should they find you? Easy. You can go to our website, we close notes.com. Or if you're interested in the note investing space or to see what we do, with our, our free class, you can always go to noteweekend.com. Um, no credit card needs to opt into it. You'll see what we do in our, our class and what we give away with it. The PDF, the three and a half hours of content and everything else is a good follow-up for you. It's a good guide. But we are here. But here's the thing. If you really wanted to launch your class and really take it to the next level, you're in the right spot. Listen to Leah. She's the person you need to talk to. She's <laughs> the person you need to have coaching. It's not what I do. She does that. And she can help you go from zero to 90 miles per hour very, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Scott. This has been so much fun. I hope our audience has had as much fun as I have. This has been amazing. Thank you for being with us today. Glad to be here. It's an honor as always. And if you're, this is a podcast too, right? You're going to turn this, you know, this is a podcast. So make sure you go over and hit that subscribe button and make sure you leave a five-star review as well. We as podcasters love to hear from our audience and we don't get enough of them. So leave a five-star review, subscribe, and we'll see you all at the top. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Scott. And bye-bye. You've been listening to the Digital Trailblazer podcast. For show notes and information about today's guests, head to digitaltrailblazer.com. Now, if you love this episode, if you got some value, make sure you leave us a review and subscribe. And be sure to share this episode with anyone you know who could use help to build their business. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.